Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is our uh, first lecture. So we are going to start with a new topic today. Let me share the screen. Okay, with this, which is new students. So in the last lecture, we have covered um, press pass to learn. Okay. So now this is another um, uh, another type of intentional talks. Okay, which is new students. Okay. All right. So before we go to the uh, substance okay, of the topic, so let's get to know um, nuisance, okay, the nature of nuisance. All right. We want to know um, the aim okay, of the thoughts here. Uh, so basically, the thought of nuisance, it protects the right to, to the use and enjoyment. So that's the emphasis as far as the, uh, the this kind of thoughts is concerned. Okay? The use and enjoyment of one's land from unreasonable interference by neighboring land user users. Okay, so essentially, it's about uh, balance, balancing competing interests. So we have two interests, okay, which compete with each other. So the law comes in okay, to strike a balance between whom, between plaintiff and defendant. Okay, plaintiff, the manner in which one person, the plaintiff may wish to use his land and for his enjoyment of profit. So basically, plaintiff um, has the right okay, to use and enjoy his land. And then there's another um, competing interest, which is interest of the neighbor. The neighbor also wants to join and use the land, okay, their own land. So they are neighbors, neighboring land. So it's always a question of balancing this interest, competing interest. Okay, uh, before we proceed further, remember I uh, mentioned about the previous topic which is trespass to land. Actually, they are um, on the face of it, okay, apparently, they seem to, um, uh, to be similar or even maybe overlap perhaps. Okay? So let's, let's try to distinguish between trespass and trespass to land and nuisance. So nuisance actually, it, is, uh, it concerns with infringement of the plaintiff's interest in the property without direct entry by the defendant. But if we compare to trespass to land, actually, trespass to land is the result of a direct entry on the land of another. So, nuisance is indirect. Okay? And then, um, trespass to land is direct. And then, another difference or distinction here is for nuisance, generally, it is actionable only on proof of a special Damage. So, in order for the plaintiff to sue the defendant, okay, plaintiff must provide evidence of special damage which is suffered by the plaintiff. But for trespass to land, remember we discussed already, okay, basically it is actionable per se. The moment it is being committed, then plaintiff has the right to sue the defendant. So, here yeah, actionable per se without the need to prove of special damage. So, that's basically the distinctions between uh, nuisance and trespass to land. And let's have a look at the case here which actually um, highlights the, or discuss the differences between a nuisance and trespass to land. The case is government of Malaysia and another and Akasa bin Ahad. This is judgment by uh, our former Supreme Court. Okay, now we have federal court. Alright, so plaintiff operated a petrol station. So he owned station, uh, the, this petrol station defendant government of Malaysia, uh, they built a federal highway which was on a higher ground okay, than the petrol station. And the road to petrol station had to be closed because of the construction of this federal highway. And defendant, the government, offered to build a road to the petrol station with a different route. But uh, this offer was refused by the plaintiff. And later, plaintiff sued for nuisance okay, uh, against the government of Malaysia. So the finding by the Supreme Court is that okay, plaintiff had failed to prove nuisance. And then um, court also pointed out that nuisance, okay, if we compare, actually is a is a of a bigger class okay, than trespass with regards to the differences. So the case is important because why it highlighted the uh, differences between um, or it compare, right? Compare between these two, um, these two similar but different thoughts. Okay? At the list of parts here. 
And then on top of uh, trespass to land, no, nuisance is also comparable to negligence. Okay, nuisance and negligence. So let's have a look at what, what are the differences between the two. Uh, the first one, of course, you know, okay, negligence, uh, it doesn't require intention. Okay, nuisance is intentional cause. All right, in terms of um, the origin, okay, for nuisance, it is an ancient thought, which is very, very old, okay, which predates negligence. So meaning that right here, nuisance come first, then only come the law of negligence. So ne negligence here, it came after nuisance. And then the, in terms of actionability, uh, nuisance uh, actionability, it depends on proof of actual damage. But for negligence, it depends on... Um, yeah, this is similar, okay? It depends on proof of actual damage and actually depends on proof of actual damage. So this is this point is similar. Okay, the first one, uh, which one comes first, they come back to the other. Okay, this is a different. Nuisance, it protects a very narrow interest, okay, which is actually to protect the interest in land with respect to the use and enjoyment of land. But for negligence, it protects wider interest, okay, so long all the elements of the negligence are fulfilled. And then for damage, okay, claimable in nuisance, okay, it's not restricted to physical damage. It includes amenity damage, little we learn, okay, resulting from interference, such as it includes noise, okay, smell. This is an uh, example of interference. It's noise, smell, smoke, vibration, and uh, so forth. Okay, the light. So in this sense, actually, it is wider than negligence. Because why? Uh, for negligence, the damage is usually restricted to physical Damage only. It doesn't include um, the interference. Okay, damage by interference like noise, smell, smoke, whatsoever. Okay? Really, it is something physical in nature. And then for nuisance, another difference here for nuisance, it only requires proof of unreasonable interference. This is actually the elements to be proved on the part of the plaintiff. And then um, the the uh, the it depends okay, with regards to the nature and extent. This is the assessment. Okay? Uh, of the interference, whether there's liability or not. And then for negligence, okay, it requires proof, of, requires proof of negligence, that is failure to meet reasonable standard of care. But for reason, standard of care is, is not uh, required, it's not um, relevant at all. Okay, after all, negligence is uh, intentional, okay, negligence is non-intentional. That's why it has certain criteria. Let's move further. Um, Okay, uh, on still on actually still on the differences comparison between uh, nuisance and negligence. Okay, so defendant who can prove that he has taken reasonable care, he may nonetheless be liable in nuisance. Okay, all right, we have this case here. Wisma Puncha Emas Nambahat and Doctor Donald R O Holohan. This is a local case, nineteen eighty seven, reported in MLJ. What happened? Plaintiff wall can okay, crack and tell due to defendants piling excavation work in the vicinity of plaintiff's clinic. And this is appeal case. Okay? Uh, actually, uh, it started with, uh, I mean, plaintiff was Dr. Donald and this is defendant. And the defendant argued, contended that he had committed no negligence. He, he has not been negligent. That is why he has taken all reasonable precautions in carrying his construction activities. But Supreme Court held that a defendant, uh, the contractor, okay, was liable for nuisance even though nuisance was not specifically pleaded. And then the court said, well, negligence is not a requirement in nuisance action. So we, it's, not, it's not really relevant whether you have taken reasonable care or not. Okay? So it will be relevant for negligence. But then for nuisance, no need to prove elements of negligence whatsoever. Okay, another comparison is nuisance and the rule in Rylands and Fletcher. Remember, you learned in your course one, okay, Rylands and Fletcher. So for nuisance, okay, generally the interference must be something that is continuous. Later, we learn. This is one of the rules governing nuisance. But for rule in Rylands and Fletcher, remember there's certain requirements. Okay? It imposes liability. Liability arises when something that is likely to cause mischief escape. Okay, escape is one of the, um, the requirements. Okay? And then uh, action here, okay, whereas this is actually uh, 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 in relation to this one, okay. Whereas an action under rule of violence and culture, one single act of interference is sufficient. So uh, for nuisance, generally, it has to be continuous. But for violence and culture, only once, uh, one single act is sufficient to prove your case under violence and culture. And this is actually still on the explanation of the uh, 
uh, elements okay, for Rylan's and Fletcher, which is actually different compared to the way okay, to prove nasals. Let's move further. Now, now we go to the types of nasals. Okay, just now we were talking about the comparison okay, uh, with uh, other categories of thoughts. All right, for types of nasals, we have two. Okay, we have public nasals, we have private nasals. But for this part of the lecture, we are going to focus on public nuisance first. Okay, private nuisance, it requires a longer discussion. So uh, it will be in part two of the lecture. Okay, what is the meaning of public nuisance? We are going to cover it again, but this is just uh, for your knowledge. Okay, I put it here for easy reference, quick reference. So public nuisance, uh, it denotes an act that causes interference to the enjoyment okay, of property. And the property here is shared by the Public. So the keyword here is public. That's why it is public nuisance. But for private nuisance, it is, it means okay, unlawful interference okay, with a person's use or enjoyment of land or some right over or in connection with it. So some of the keywords here is person. Okay, actually it refers to private, private person here. Okay, in connection with the right to use and to enjoy his land. Okay, we go to public nuisance. Definition I have given just now, okay, basically interference with the enjoyment of property, which is shared by public. So property here is, is shared by the public. This is some of the common example, okay, carrying an offensive trade. So trade is something activities which is shared by the public, okay, or selling food unfit for human consumption. So here selling food to the whole public. Or another example, obstructing public highways. So obviously highways is meant for the public. Another example which is not here is uh, pollution, a river pollution for example, okay, water pollution. Because why? The river is shared by the whole public. And then um, there's a, a note here, okay, it's not a requirement that nuisance act must affect the entire, the entire or every single member of the society. Even though you have the word public, okay, you don't have to prove that the act here, for example, obstructing public highway, it doesn't affect all everyone okay, in that particular locality or society. Okay? So what's the requirement? It still be regarded as a public nuisance okay, if it materially affects reasonable comfort and convenience of life of a class or part of society, a class, a small number of society, but still we which uh, a, a group of people. Okay, all right. It's not one single uh, person. So, and then how do you how do you tell? Okay, this amongst two class and this that one is not a class. All right. So it is actually a question of facts, and then it will be determined by the court from case to case basis. Example: Okay, manufacturer who has polluted a stream. That's the example of uh, river pollution. They might be fined and might also be ordered to pay the cost of clean up. So that's the effect. Okay. Uh, fine can be imposed and then it has to do the cleaning up of the polluted river. We are going to discuss all the relevant cases after this. And then actually public nuisance, uh, the unique part is that it is both a crime and or thought. It depends. Okay. Uh, in many situations, okay, public nuisance is uh, actually also amounts to a crime. Okay. Here, especially, how do you know? It is actually um, provided by Penal Code under Section 268 of Penal Code here. Uh, it, it, it is stated, okay, a person is guilty, uh, that's the word, okay, guilty of a public nuisance, okay, and this is the way it is being done. Who does any act or is guilty of an illegal omission, okay, which causes any common injury, danger or annoyance to the public or to the people in general who dwell or occupy property in the vicinity or which must necessarily cause injury, obstruction, danger or annoyance to the persons okay, who may have occasion to use any public right. So that's the emphasis. You can see the word people, public, okay, persons here. So obviously, uh, public nuisance is also a crime under Section 268 of Penal Code. So, if anyone, okay, if anyone okay, does an act which causes annoyance to the public in general, so obviously it is an offence under penal code. And then this is an example just now, okay, um, obstructing public highway, polluting streams, okay. And then this is what, uh, actually we have a um, number of provisions in the penal code which is related to um, public nuisance, okay. 
Section 290 talk about um, the, the amount of the a fine okay shall be punished with a fine which may extend to 400 ringgit you you might also refer to some other uh, sections later okay for your reference uh, 268 until 291 so it talk about uh, it is relevant to public reasons you don't want to spend too much on um, public i mean reason as a crime here you will learn in your criminal law later Okay, and then still, okay, still is on uh, whenever, okay, whenever um, the museum, public museum amounts to a crime here, then who has the right to uh, to institute a uh, criminal proceeding the act here, all right? Public prosecutor has the right because why? The moment it is a crime, so it is um, against the state, okay, offense against the state. And then, uh, on top of, okay, we put aside the crime, crime or criminal act here. So, public reasons, okay, I mean, the same act here may also be actionable as a part so that a person who has suffered special damage can claim damages for public reasons. Okay, remember, uh, criminal law has different purpose and also uh, tax law, civil in, civil in nature also has a different purpose. Okay, why the party is suing for under uh, thoughts law okay to ask for images a compensation because for um the crime against the state which is criminal it has nothing to do with compensation whatsoever okay all right so a person who has suffered special damage so special damage here it will include okay, both general damages like pain and uh, inconvenience and also specific expenses incurred by the plaintiff okay, let's move further and this is another uh, requirement, okay? The, um, the, the, for example, plaintiff just now suffer uh, the damage, all right? So uh, it must, however, can be a direct consequence. So whatever damage suffered by the plaintiff, okay, in terms of public nuisance, yeah, it has to be direct and not a consequential damage here. Example here, okay, this is just illustration. Plaintiff suffers breathing problem due to defendant smoke pollution. So smoke pollution is an uh, example of public Reasons. So he can be said to have suffered direct damage okay, because of the breathing problem. But what if after breathing problem he suffered some other uh, uh, some other uh, related problem? Example: When plaintiff suffers headache because of defendant's pollution, which subsequently leads uh, leads him get migraine. So the migraine here is consequential damage, meaning that here the direct consequence is headache, but consequential is migraine. So in that particular situation, okay, migraine is considered as consequential and cannot claim under uh, nuisance. Yeah. Okay. And then um, damage plain to suffer must also be over and above other members of the public. Remember, public nuisance it talk about public action. So in order for the plaintiff to be able to sue, okay, to proceed with the suit, so plaintiff must prove that he has suffered over and above other members of the public. Okay, another question here because we were talking about uh, AG who has the right to sue, okay? So whether an individual can institute proceedings seeking injunction to restrain a public nuisance without consent of AG? Can plaintiff, okay, um, as a, an individual, uh, proceed to sue okay, without asking for the consent of AG? So we have relevant section here, section 8 and section 1 of uh, Government Proceedings Ordinance 1956, okay? I think it's act already. Uh, it provides that only the AG or two or more persons having obtained his written consent may institute such proceeding. Meaning that here, um, AG must give the written consent because the AG wants to control okay, the, uh, uh, to avoid floodgates actually. Because why? If one of those injured will allow, for example, ten people were injured. Okay, so if you allow one people to take personal action, okay, one single action here, so uh, maybe thousand more people who has suffered will sue. So the all right, and then it is stated it will be unreasonable to multiply suits by giving every man a separate right of action. So basically, they can actually take uh, all actions together. For example, twenty of them, hundred of them together, one will be. Uh, the, the, lead, the leader. Okay? So again, uh, nevertheless, if plaintiff can show that the nuisance which he complains is the cause of special damage to himself, this can be a cause of action. But if he suffers special damage above all the other people who are being affected, then he can still proceed okay, with the suit. So that's basically uh, from the case of Tottenham Urban District Council and Williamson. 
Okay, let's have a look at the local case on public nuisance. Pacific Engineering and Haji Ahmad Rice Mill um, reported in 1966 KMLG. What happened? Uh, Padi has from defendant's factory, from Haji Ahmad Rice Mill here, flood over plaintiff's premises. Plaint, uh, plaintiff owns certain premises. Okay? When defendant burned the party house. So the activity of burning the house is something which is uh, common, okay? typical for that uh, meal. Okay? Actually, they, they want to um, dispose okay? all the party house okay? after they uh, extract uh, the rice. Okay? So plaintiff workers had to cover their mouth okay? and noses to prevent themselves from inhaling the dust, okay, that's the effects of burning uh, the paddy house. Okay? They had to shut the, the door when the wind blew in their direction and then it affects the machine. Okay? Their heavy construction machines become dusty very quickly okay, because of the dust okay, from the house. And then plaintiff lubricant oil also becomes dirty due to the dust from the paddy's house. So because of that, Pacific Engineering for action for injunction against the defendant okay, to stop the activities of burning the paddy house. So the court held that okay, in a public nuisance, if someone may institute proceedings without obtaining prior consent from the AG, provided he has suffered special damage. So is it so in this case? Yes. Okay. In this case, plaintiff had proved that they, they suffered personal discomfort and injury to, to property. And because of that, injunction against defendant burning rice house in the compound of their premises was granted. So they got the injunction. Because sometimes, even if you you are you, you are getting money, but if the activity uh, continues, okay, persists, so still it doesn't uh, resolve the problem. So you need the injunction to stop the activity, which creates nuisance. Okay, another cool this is that okay, uh, whether local authorities which sorry which are statutorily entrusted with the task of maintaining the municipal law of their area for the common good of all. So whether local authorities can seek injunction in their own name to restrain public nuisance within the area. Remember all um, area, they have their own local council. So whether these authority, local authorities can take action in order to protect the area. And the answer is Yes, okay. there is a statutory exception uh, for a local authority to abate a uh, pub, uh, public nuisance without intervention of AG. So they can proceed on their own. Okay. We, no need to, uh, for, uh, for the AG to initiate the action. So this is provided under Section 80 of Local Government Act, okay, Local uh, 1976. Local authority shall take step okay, to remove, put down, whatever, okay, whatever relevant step here. Yeah. We have the case, and this is federal court decision. MPPP, Majlis Perbandaran Pulau Pinang, and Boi Siu Tan. What happened here? Uh, local authority, plaintiff MPPP here, they brought an action for injunction to restrain defendants from using their premises as a restaurant okay, without having up the license. So obviously, this uh, defendant, they were using the premises owned by MPPP, okay, but no license to operate the restaurant. And also, uh, the suit is for the images to ask for the images for public users. And then High Court said, well, plaintiff MPPP could not sue defendants without the consent in writing of AG because in this case, uh, MPPP didn't get consent from AG. But Federal Court said, plaintiff had commenced action based on Section 80, and then it allows local authority to take action in its own name without uh, asking um, PP to initiate the action. So it is allowed by virtue of Section. Okay, another alternative which is available to uh, the public is by reporting to authorities because why? The local council can take action. So a person or group of persons affected by the activities conducted by another on the latter's land okay, may choose to lodge a report to particular authorities. And then actually in a real situation, practically, okay, it is widely used because why? There are many organizations and government bodies whose activities are statutorily governed. So it can be done through them. And then damage must be proved in election for nuisances or otherwise. So that's the normal requirement. Okay? Whenever there's any action, there must be evidence of damage. Okay? Otherwise, the action will fail. 
So that's all for public nuisance. Okay, in the next uh, part of the lecture, we are going to continue with private nuisance. So let me stop share first. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for listening. Hopefully, you have been able to um, follow and uh, digest, okay, understand. So I'll see you in the part two of the lecture for the nuisance. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.